If you have gold and silver in hand or in a private non-bank vault that's out of the system, the system can go down and you still have wealth. You will have the, you will have wealth when the system starts to come back up. And those that own gold and those that own silver on the backside of what's coming, they, I guess the best way to describe it is those that, that own gold and silver will become mini banks themselves because that's going to be the collateral for uh, whatever type of, of new currency ultimately comes about after everything collapses. Gold prices edged higher on Monday as investors priced in a pause in interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve and its policy meeting this week, with a focus on the U.S. Central Bank's rate outlook. Bill Holter, a vice president of commercial banking with more than 20 years of success in the financial services industry. As per Holter, historically, gold and silver provided a strong foundation for money, but today's system relies on debt instruments, leading to instability. Gold Silver Institute recently posted on Twitter, Price moves in silver are more explosive due to the size of its market compared to gold. 90% of the upward moves in silver happen in the last 10% of the precious metals bull market when retail investors jump in. Due to the United States' importance in global capital markets and international debt, the dollar continues to play a significant role internationally, Reuters reports. Regarding CBDCs, Holter states that central banks will introduce them, but they will ultimately fail. Representative French Hill, who chairs the Subcommittee on Digital Assets, Financial Technology, and Inclusion, remarked that the enthusiasm for a CBDC within Congress is limited, with only a few outliers believing it could be a silver bullet for numerous global challenges. Meanwhile, Bill predicts that for fair trade, BRICS nations will likely introduce their own trade settlement currency. As per reports, BRICS has been planning to create a new currency that would escalate the process of de-dollarization, knocking out all Western tactics on retrogressing rising economies. Now, we are presenting you a glimpse of Bill Holter's insights from his recent interview. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. And when I, and when I say the, ultimately, they definitely are going to try to come out with, with central bank digital currencies. And I believe those are going to fail because they're no different at all from fiat currencies, with the exception of everything that you do can be tracked. But there will not be confidence. I mean, if the U.S. goes from a dollar, the, the dollar the way it is now, to a digital dollar, what has changed? Has the financial position of the, the U.S. Treasury changed? No. By the time we get the central bank digital currency, the Treasury will be even in worse shape. So they're definitely going to come out with a CBDC, but there will be some type of new currency on the backside. And any new currency is going to have to uh, have confidence behind it. And the only way to build confidence is to back it with some type of real asset. And the best real asset to back uh, a currency with is gold and silver because they are money. Oil's not money. Wheat's not money. Uh, I mean, you could go down a list of commodities. They're not money. Gold and silver are the definition of money. But the world no longer has a foundation that's real. You know, 50, 100 years ago, we had a foundation of gold and silver as money. So the foundation was strong. It was thick. It was firm. The foundation today are, are credit or debt instruments. And all over the world, you're seeing interest rates rise. When interest rates rise, credit securities decrease in value. So what you're seeing is you're seeing the foundation itself being hollowed out. And I think it's important that people understand your, your asset base, your, your foundation is, it's turning into sand right before your eyes. I think that's a hundred percent guaranteed lock. Um, they are tired of performing trade where they give real goods and are paid in dollars, which are basically uh, fake money. They're, they're, the trade is something for nothing and the world is tired of something for, for nothing. So I think it's absolutely guaranteed that the, the BRICS nations, just because they want free and fair, uh, settlement in trade, they're definitely going to come out with some type of currency 
some type of uh, trade settlement currency that means they actually get paid and actually get settled on whatever trade. Silver and gold don't do anything. An ounce of silver or an ounce of gold that was mined and uh, minted 100 years ago is still that same ounce of silver or ounce of gold. What does change is the currency. The currencies over time, uh, if, if they weren't printed, they, they wouldn't be volatile. But because they, they print so much new currency every year, each and every year, they've been debased. So it's not gold or silver that change. It's the currencies themselves. Now, there's always going to be a, a, a relation between uh, gold and oil or gold and coffee or gold and whatever commodity you want to talk about. And those can move and they do change over time. Uh, but they don't change as drastically as the value of the currencies. So I guess what I'm telling you is by using the currency as a measuring stick, that's a faulty way to, to look at things because the currency itself is not a set. Uh, it's not a, a set measuring stick. It's not a, a, a set yardstick. An ounce of gold or an ounce of silver is an absolute uh, hard and fast yardstick. Selling activity in Q2 has done little to dent the underlying positive trend in central bank gold demand. Findings from our latest Central Bank Gold Reserve survey now in its sixth year show sentiment towards gold remains positive. Seven in 10 respondents believe that global gold reserves will rise over the next 12 months, a significant increase from last year's survey. During the interview, Bill Holter stated central bank stockpiling gold in anticipation of the U.S. dollar's decline, which makes up a significant part of global reserves. But while central banks added 228.4 tons of gold in the first quarter, a 176% increase from a year prior, J.P. Morgan said that continued momentum is uncertain. The note cited a second quarter slowdown, where net purchases normalized at around 100 tons. Let's get back to the interview. As far as the central banks buying, buying gold, do what the central banks are doing. Don't do what they're telling you to do. I mean, central banks are buying gold for a reason. Point. They understand that, that there's only a short timeline before the dollar craters. And what is the dollar? Roughly 60% of uh, reserves that central banks around the world hold. So that is going to be a huge smoking black hole of zero on balance sheets of central banks. And what they're doing by buying gold is they're trying to own something that will uh, call it explode in value, whatever you want to call it, to fill up the big black hole that's going to come once the dollar collapses. So do what the central banks are doing. Don't do what they're saying or telling you to do. Mm. Uh, as far as uh, as as far as becoming your own central bank, you want to get your you want to get your assets out of the system. The system is uh in its entirety is all about liabilities everyone every bank every entity either owes or is owed and those debts are not going to be paid so when the music stops if you're uh if you're not even on the dance floor you've you're insulating yourself from liabilities that are are failing within the system and to get out of the system. How do you do that? If you own stocks, call your broker and have your broker either uh, send the shares to the transfer agent or have the shares issued and sent to you. That way you don't, if your broker goes down, your shares are on the broker's books. Your shares are, are, on their balance sheet. They own the shares for your benefit. But if your broker goes down, it could be years or maybe never that you get your shares back. Um, I mean, you want to exit insurance contracts. You want to exit uh, having money in the bank. In the U.S., if you put money into the bank, it's not a deposit. What it is, 
is it's no longer your money. It's the bank's money. <laughs> and if wrong. they fail, yeah. if the bank fails, I mean, in written in law within the FDIC, they're not going to do bailouts. They can't possibly mathematically do bailouts. They will do bail-ins. And that is the law now is that they're going to do bail-ins. And what that means is they're going to take part or all of your money to save their own asses. Uh, with gold and silver. Central banks are actively acquiring gold as a hedge against the anticipated decline of the US dollar, a significant part of global reserves. This move aligns with Bill Holter's prediction that central bank digital currencies will ultimately fail and the historical strength of gold and silver as the foundation for money. How might the ongoing shift in global financial strategies impact the future of currency? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to show your support towards our channel by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos covering more exciting topics. Thank you for watching.